In today's video, I'm going to dive deep into the Cadena blockchain. By the end of this video, you are going to understand every aspect about the Cadena blockchain. But if you're new to blockchain technology, the Cadena blockchain is so advanced that a lot of this is going to be way over your head. So I broke all of this down into key, short, five to 10 minute videos, and I added them to my Cadena whiteboard playlist. Links are down in the description. So if you're ready, let's dive deep. So what is the Cadena blockchain? Well, that's the first problem. Cadena is not a blockchain. Cadena is a network and Chainweb is the multi-core blockchain. That means that Chainweb is not a single chain blockchain. The Cadena blockchain is 20 chains all connected together that has the ability to scale up to a thousand blockchains or more. Let me explain. I'm sure everybody watching this video has heard about Bitcoin and Ethereum. In order to understand why Cadena is so much superior to both Bitcoin and even Ethereum 2.0, I need to explain why. The Cadena blockchain took the security of Bitcoin and the smart contracts of Ethereum and merged them into one blockchain. Bitcoin security comes from its proof of work SHA-256 algorithm, which is not quantum resistant. Unlike Cadena, who chose to use the Blake 2S algorithm, which is quantum resistant. Now I could spend the next 15 minutes explaining what the difference is between the Blake 2S algorithm and the SHA-256 algorithm, but to sum it up, Blake 2S is quantum resistant and the code is 100 times harder to crack than SHA-256. Now, let's talk about Ethereum. Ethereum is also a single chain blockchain, meaning that Ethereum miners are only mining and producing blocks on one chain. When we are talking about block and why they all hit scaling limitations, it all boils down to one key fact. A single block can only hold so much data. So let me explain. Taking a look at the block on the screen, imagine that this block represents one block on the blockchain. Inside each block is a list of transactions. Now every blockchain is different, but they all pretty much function the same way. Each block is limited by size. Each transaction that goes into the block takes up space. On the Bitcoin blockchain, one block is mined every 10 minutes and each block is one megabyte in size. On Ethereum, each block is 80 KB, but the Ethereum blockchain mines a new block every 10 seconds, which means over a 10 minute period, Ethereum produces roughly 60 blocks. And the total size of all of those blocks is about four megabytes worth of data. So let's do an example together. Let's just pretend like the Ethereum blockchain mines one block every 10 seconds and that that block size is 80 KB. That means that this block can hold up to 80 KB worth of data. Now let's just say that the average size of every transaction is one KB. And obviously it's not, but we're gonna keep it simple. That would mean that each Ethereum block could only hold up to 80 transactions tops. If the block size is 80 KB and each transaction is one KB, that means that we could only fit 80 transactions into every block. Does that make sense? A single blockchain will always hit scaling limitations because no matter how hard you try, you only have one block and there is only so much data that you can fit into each block. On a blockchain like Bitcoin, it's very simple because inside the block, every block is just transactions. Every transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain is very similar in size. And that is in contrast to blockchains like Ethereum because Ethereum has smart contracts. For example, I could write a smart contract that airdrops 0.01 Ethereum to a thousand different wallet addresses. Just think about how much code I would need to write in order to write a smart contract that could hold a thousand Ethereum wallet addresses inside. If that one smart contract was 20 KB and blocks on the Ethereum blockchain only hold 80 KB worth of data, well, then you might end up with a block that only holds four transactions. And this is where TPS comes into play. Blockchains like Solana claim that their blockchain can process 65,000 TPS. I mean, that sounds great, sounds really sexy, but that means that on the Solana blockchain, the size of every block is 10 MB, and a block is produced every 800 milliseconds. Solana claims that its blockchain running at peak performance can produce 1G worth of data every second. So what Solana is implying here is that if every transaction was 0.0001 KB in size, the smallest possible size, and every block was filled to max capacity, the blockchain could process 65,000 TPS. You see, TPS is just a sexy term by blockchains used to sound cool and show off. And in my opinion, this is why the Solana blockchain breaks every time their block explorer shows that the blockchain is producing more than 3,500 transactions per second. Solana tried creating a new consensus algorithm called proof of history 
that pre timestamps transactions before they enter the mempool. And every time the blockchain gets busy, the network starts to fragment and hard fork itself. This requires a team of people to shut down block production, then restart the blockchain, and everybody pretends like nothing happened. Well, at least that's my opinion anyways, so definitely do your own research. But let me be very clear when I say this. Blockchains do not stop. Centralized third-party processing software, those go offline. The purpose of a blockchain is the fact that it continues to run 100% of the time. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. When a blockchain stops producing blocks, you have no clue what modifications were made or what code was updated. This is not PayPal or Venmo. This is the blockchain industry. The reason people have invested trillions of dollars into Bitcoin is because the blockchain has never stopped running in over a decade. There is no centralized third party that controls the reset switch on Bitcoin. The miners guarantee that. If anybody wanted to change any code in a proof of work blockchain, they have to hard fork the chain and then convince 51% of miners to migrate to the new chain and start mining. If they don't, then the hard fork dies and the main chain continues to run. In my opinion, the only reason why proof of stake blockchains were created in the first place is because no one could figure out how to scale a proof of work until Kadena. This is where the Kadena team comes into play. In order to solve the blockchain trilemma, the Kadena team recruited some of the smartest cryptographers in the world to help them. Stuart Popejoy, CEO, 15 years of experience building the most advanced algorithmic trading software in the world. He also built JP Morgan Chase's first blockchain called Juno. Will Martino graduated from Yale, top of his class. He was recruited by the SEC and sent to private hacker school. He then helped the SEC build their blockchain steering committee. Dr. Stuart Habert graduated PhD from Columbia University, the number one cited author in the Bitcoin white paper. He also built the world's first blockchain 20 years before Bitcoin, and it's still running to this day. He is a legend in the blockchain industry and will go down in history as one of the greatest cryptographers of all time. Hell, he might even be Satoshi Nakamoto. Doug Beardsley, he has 15 years of software engineering experience. Doug spent 10 years working with Haskell full time. Doug also co-organizes the Compose Conference, the New York Haskell User Group, and he's one of the original authors of the Snap Web Framework. Emily Pillmore, AKA the Packed Mommy. Emily used to be the Chief Technology Officer for the Haskell Foundation. That's right, the same coding language that the Cardano blockchain is built in, Emily used to run it. In 2018, she was also a senior software engineer at Disney, and she is a legend in the Haskell community. And last but not least, Dr. Lars graduated summa cum laude and received his master's degree from a university in Berlin. And then he went on to get his MPhil and PhD in computer science. Lars specializes in the development and distributed systems and verification tools related to security, cryptography, formal methods, and algorithmic complexity. And those are just five out of 25 core team members that have come together to build the greatest blockchain in the history of the world. The Kadena blockchain is so advanced and so superior to everything else in the industry that it is naturally attracting the smartest minds from all over the world. And this is what leads us into the coding language called Pact. Because Stuart and Will Martino built JP Morgan Chase's first blockchain called Juno, they got all of the hands-on experience that they needed to realize that they could never build a blockchain that could scale and meet the demands of global real world adoption using any coding languages that previously existed in this industry. Just imagine how smart somebody would have to be to read and write 10 different languages. I mean, the smartest man in the world can only speak 59 different languages, and that's pretty freaking crazy. Now, when you're talking about software developers and coders, most people spend a lifetime mastering one or two coding languages. Stuart Popejoy can read, write, and code in 20 different coding languages. Pretty mind blowing. And this is exactly why he spent the last seven years carefully crafting the most advanced coding language that the world has ever seen, and it's called Pact. Pact is the secret sauce that allowed Will Martino to design a blockchain that could scale proof of work. Because there are so many moving parts in a blockchain, every line of code is mission critical. There is zero room for error. And this is why Pact is the first smart contract coding language that is human readable. Pact is also Turing complete, just like Bitcoin. I'm sure y'all have heard about the $14 billion in hacks stolen from crypto investors in 2021 and the $100 billion stolen from hackers in 2022. A majority of those hacks would have never been possible if the blockchain or the layer 2 application was coded in PACT. Because PACT uses formal verification, when a person is writing code, the Z3 software analyzes every line of code as you write. When you pause for 3 seconds, 
Z3 goes to work, analyzing billions of outputs per second, looking for ways to break your code. Because the coding language is Turing complete, the code needs to be complete, meaning that there can't be any backdoor loopholes for hackers to exploit. It legit almost makes your code bulletproof, but it can't fix stupid. If a developer puts a plus sign where they should have put a minus sign, you could still run into some serious problems. But that's what we have audits for and hackathons. Audits plus PACT make blockchain safe again. Trust, transparency, and decentralization are the backbones of the crypto space. And this is what brings us to the next topic. What is Chainweb? Chainweb is the Kadena blockchain. When Kadena first launched, they launched with 10 chains all connected together. And it looks like this. Each pink dot on the screen represents one blockchain. As you can see from the screen here, all of the blockchains are connected together. Just like the blocks on a Bitcoin blockchain, they are all connected together using a cryptographic hash. Kadena connects multiple blockchains together using that same technique. And this technique is called hash braiding. Hash braiding allows Kadena to connect multiple blockchains together. And this is what really changed everything for Kadena. Because the chains are braided together in this special pattern, not every chain is directly connected to every chain, but the farthest chain is no farther away than three chains. So you can see here, if I had coins on chain one and I wanted to go to chain nine, I could go from chain one to chain six to chain nine, or I could go from chain one to chain five to chain four to chain nine. Now, no matter what chain I'm currently on, I can get to any chain in three hops. If we take a look at the diagram on the screen now, this is what the Kadena blockchain looks like with 20 blockchains. And you can see here how all the chains are connected in this star-like pattern. And this is where Will Martino used the graph theory degree diameter problem to braid the chains together. If we look at the diagram on this table, it shows how many connection points you use in this theory. So when Kadena scales up to 100 or 1000 chains, the farthest chain will only be 4 hops away. But trying to deal with 1000 chains and trying to transfer coins around 1000 different chains sounds like a headache. And you're right, it would be. But Kadena created what are called crypto gas stations. Now, crypto gas stations are cool and all, but I like to think of them more like teleportation stations myself. On Kadena, you only have one wallet address. Doesn't matter what chain your coins are on, they still only have one wallet address. But different dApps on Kadena can be built on different chains. Some dApps might run on one chain or they might run on multiple chains. It just depends on the amount of transactions that that specific dApp needs to process. So this is where Kadena got created and created crypto gas stations. So instead of needing to move coins from chain one to nine to 50 or whatever, Kadena created crypto gas stations. When you wanna send coins from chain one to chain 1000, in the background, your coins get burned on one chain. The chain submits proof that those coins have been burned to the next chain and they are replicated on the next chain. It's really freaking cool. Check out my Kadena gas station whiteboard video down in the description for a full breakdown on how Kadena gas stations work. Now, if that wasn't already impressive, by 2023, the end user won't need to know what chain a product or dApp is built on. The Kadena blockchain will do all of the work for you in the back end. So when Kadena scales up to a thousand blockchains, and changes every aspect of life as we know it, people using the Kadena network will need to know zero about blockchain to interact with the Kadena ecosystem. I mean, that's pretty freaking cool, right? Kadena solved the blockchain trilemma, and that is something that not one layer one blockchain in the industry has ever been able to do. Not only did they solve it, but they got a patent on it. Now, the key that makes Kadena so much more powerful than Ethereum and Bitcoin is the fact that when Kadena scales up, it doesn't require any more energy usage. Because of the hash braiding technique I explained earlier in this video, the Kadena blockchain can scale up to thousands, if not 10,000s of blockchains, just like Bitcoin and Ethereum, without using any more energy. Just think about how regulators and governments hate on Bitcoin because all Bitcoin does is store value and it uses crazy amounts of energy. What if you combine Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Polkadot, Cardano, all into one blockchain and that one blockchain used less energy than Bitcoin? Do you think people would really still complain? I mean, pretty cool again. Unlike Bitcoin and Ethereum, Kadena has the ability to incentivize miners to mine green. But in less than 15 years, everything will be running off solar or renewable energy. So maybe that won't be such a strong selling point in 15 years, but today it sure is. And last but not least, the Kadena ecosystem charges $0 for gas fees. I just sent $50,000 across the Kadena ecosystem yesterday and it didn't cost me a penny. Just imagine how much more crypto investors would have if they never spent a penny on gas fees. 
In January of 2022, users on the Ethereum network spent $58 million in Ethereum gas fees. I mean, I could go on for days about why Kadena is so much better and so much more superior to every other blockchain, but I'm running out of time. So at the end of the day, Kadena has figured out a way to scale proof of work. They solved the blockchain trilemma and they have a team that's composed of the greatest minds in blockchain history. And the Kadena team also locked up their team tokens for 10 years to prove to the community that they are here for the long haul. Investing in Kadena today at 225 would be equal to investing in Bitcoin when Bitcoin was 20, or better yet, investing in Ethereum when Ethereum was $3.30. So if you wanna learn more about making generational wealth or investing in cryptocurrency, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and then come join us live on my second YouTube channel. Good vibes always, crypto fam.